Liza Marie P. Gallardo. And I am your teacher, Miss Kyla Taliki. And I am your teacher, Maria Lorraine P. Taranda. And I am your teacher, August Junaid Tupacadon. And lastly, I am teacher, Steven B. Cogdas. And now, let's, let's start. start! Good morning, class, and please stand. Now, Kyla, please lead the prayer. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Once again, good morning class. But before you sit down, can you please pick up the pieces of paper and then check the alignment of your chairs. How are you feeling right now class? Oh, I'm so glad to hear that. Now can somebody recall about the previous topic? Alright, that's correct. Now, in this morning, we will move forward to our next topic. But before, are you familiar with the game Four Picks, One Word? Alright! Now, please take a look of these pictures and try to guess what is the message of this. Okay? Miss Maria, you are raising your hand. Can you please guess this? Okay, but nice try. Miss Marie, oh, let's check if your answer is correct. So the word is poetry. And now let me call my co-teacher to discuss this main topic. Okay, class. So these are the objectives for today's lesson. At the end of the lesson, you must expect to define poetry and identify the different types of poetry and create a short poem. Now, before I will discuss the main topic, which is poetry, I will call somebody to answer my question. Give me one word that describes poetry and why. Okay, Stever. Very good. August. Very good. All your answers are correct. Give them five claps. Okay now. Poetry is a literature. Using your imagination, feelings, and expression, you can create a poem. Besides, with your past memories such as historical events, even your experiences, it can create a poem. True language that you have been chosen. But it is very important to be organized. For example, the word you've been chosen must be arranged on its coordination of tone, meaning, and rhythm. Right, class? Are you still with me? Okay, let's continue. Poetry is probably the oldest form of literature. The oldest written manuscript mostly are the epic poem, such as stories of ancient mythology. And we have also types of poetry. First, Haiku. Second, free verse. Third, calligraph. Fourth, limerick. And last is Ken. So, I will give the floor to my co-teachers to discuss the types of poetry. So, we will go in to discuss the types of poetry and haiku will be the first poetry that we will discuss. So, can you please read Jamaica, the definition of haiku. Thank you. Haiku, yes, haiku is a form of poetry that originated in Japan and an written Japanese literary form with only three lines and has a syllables of 575. Five. It has 575, five, so it's easy to remember and identify haiku. Not in nature, and season is a frequently used, described in a traditional Japanese haiku. For example, winter by the pond, ice hangs from a craggy tree. Where did the frogs go? It is an rhythm and it consists three lines. And the first line is consists five syllables. Winter by the pond. It has five syllables. The second line is has seven syllables and ice hangs from a craggy tree and it has seven syllables and the third line is 
Where did the frog go? It has five syllables. So again, haiku only consists three lines and it has a pattern of five, seven, five syllables. So, so how many lines in haiku? Yes, it has three lines. And what is the pattern? Five, seven, five. Very good. So let me call in my co-teacher to explain and discuss the next type of poetry. Okay, class. We are now here in free verse poetry. This is the kind of poetry that can be used without a second form. So it doesn't have a redundant rhyme or rhythm scheme. Other people think that this is the basic and best type of poetry. Do you agree, class? Yes or no? Yes! Because poets using free verse are not following certain rules. When they write, they have the freedom to choose whatever words, sounds, and shape they want in their poetry. So as you can see in my example, the devices often used are alliteration, assonance, metaphor, simile, repetition, and internal, internal rhyme. And that is the free verse poetry. And now, let me call my co-teacher to discuss the other type of poetry. Okay class, the next type of poetry that I will discuss is about the calligram poetry. But before we proceed to the definition example, does anybody in here who had already idea about the calligram poetry? Okay, Maria Lorraine Taranza, you're raising your hand. Good point. Actually class, calligram poetry is a poetry where the sheep and layout of the letters and words on the paper are related to the poem's meaning. Calligram poetry is easy to do because it has no rules in rhythm, rhyming, and the limits of words you can choose. An example of calligram poetry is this. And now, I will give the floor to, the, to my co-teacher to explain the next type of poetry. Okay class, let's move to the next type of the poetry. Wait which is the Limerick Poetry. Do you have any idea or any knowledge or background of this poetry? Okay, that's right. So, Zephyr, could you please read the definition of the Limerick Poetry? Okay, thank you. So, Limerick Poetry is have a five-line poem, consists a single stanza, and also with a strict rhyme, which is a A A D B A. So what does it mean? So I have here an example that was titled There was an old man in a tree. So there was an old man in a tree who was horribly bored by a bee. When they said, Does it buzz? He replied, Yes, it does. It's a regular brute of a bee. So you know understand of the rhyme scheme of the limerick poetry okay and then mostly of the limerick are comedy and nearly all are trivial in nature and also the first line of this poetry usually introduce a person or a place and then the limerick poetry is having a strict rhyme, rhyme scheme, that is A-A-D-D-A. And then consists of a single stanza with a five-line poem. And now let me call my co-teacher to introduce a next type of poetry. Okay, so um, we will now discuss the um, last part or the last type of poetry, which is, which is the canning poetry. So, which among you can kindly read the definition of poetry? Okay, Neil, kindly stand up and read the definition. Okay, thank you very much. Can you may now sit down. So, to simplify, when we write a, um, a canning poet, poem, the stanzas are composed of two words that are adjective and describes the main noun. And, of course, um, there are a lot of um, canning poems that ends with a, a phrase that says put these together or a question that what am I? So I have here an example Paul Licker, Daydreamer, Milk Drinker, 
Yarn Bull Chaser, Dog Hater, Mouse Chaser, Stroke Lover. Put these together, I'm a cat. So always remember, you can distinguish a canning poem by looking at its stanza and ending. Okay, so that concludes uh, the types of poetry and of course, I will now call in my colleague to discuss the instructions for the um, group work. Now class, we are done about discussing what is poetry and what are the types of poetry. Now let's proceed to the group activity. The, I, will, I will group you into four groups and each group must have one representative to randomly pick a paper in this cup. And in this cup, it consists the types of poetry. Once you are done randomly picking the paper from the cup, you will create or make that type of poetry. After that, you will discuss and explain that poetry that you choose or pick that you made next meeting. Is there any question guys about your group activity? If none, you can start now. So the group activity is done. You all did a great job. So let us recall our lesson today. You can raise your right hand if you'd like to answer. My first question is, what is again is poetry? What is poetry? Yes, Bea, you are raising your hand. Correct, it is literature involved in a concentrated imaginative awareness of experience through language chosen a range for its meaning, sound, and rhythm. My second question is, is what are the types of poetry that have been discussed? Yes, so I don't see anybody raising their hands. Nobody wants to answer. Should I call names? Yes, Marie. It had haiku, calligraph, limerick. What else? There's two more. Yes, Julie. Yes, free verse and canning. Very good. And now for the third question is, what have you observed about poetry? Poetry is? Yes, John. Yes, correct. It is an artistic, artistic language to express thoughts, feelings, and emotions. Wow. What else? Yes, Chris. Very good. It is a type of literature that tries to feel the reader's imagination. So, I believe you have really listened to our class discussion. So, now I have prepared here an activity sheet. This is only 10 item piece that consists of two types of tests, a multiple choice, and a true or false. Please read and understand the directions carefully. And I will give you 10 minutes in answering this activity. Column 1. Column 2. Please pass the paper to your classmates. Does everyone have an activity sheet? Are we all good? Okay, you can now start answering. Okay, time's up. Are you all done? If you are all done, give me a thumbs up and a count of three. One, two, three. Now, exchange paper with your seat mate and let us all check your activity sheets. Are you all ready? Are you all ready? Okay. The test number one, directions. Read and analyze the questions carefully and choose the letter of the correct answer. Number one, it is a type of poetry where the shapes and layout of Letters, words on the paper relate to the poem meaning. The correct answer is the correct answer is B. Calligram. Very good. Number two, a form of literature that evokes concentrated imaginative awareness of experience or a specific emotional response. The correct answer is yes, A. Poetry. Number three. It is a perspective form of Japanese poetry. The correct answer is A. Haiku. Very good. Number four. It is usually humorous poetry. The correct answer is letter D. Very good. Limerick. 
Number five, it is deriving from Old Norse verb. The correct answer is letter C. Kenning. Very good. Now let us proceed and test number two. Directions. Read each statement carefully. Write P if the statement is true. Write the correct answer if the statement is false. Number one, Kenning poetry is characterized by an irregular rhythm and rhyme. True both may be used at times. It is true or false? It is false. And the correct answer is reverse. Very good. Number two, haiku consists of three lines. It is true or false? It is true. Very good. Number three, limerick poetry is strict to A, A, B, B, A. It is correct or false? It is true or false? It is true. Very good. Number four. Haiku consists of eight syllables in total. It is true or false? It is false. And the correct answer is 17, eight, 70 syllables. Number five. Calligram poem. It's the shapes made by the letters, words, lines of poetry or verse expresses. The correct answer is... The right answer is true or false? It is true. Very good. Okay, count the number of the correct items and give the activity sheet to the owner. When your score is gold, hand over your paper activity sheet to me. Who among you got 10? Very good. 9. 8. 7. Are, the end, are there any lower scores than 6? Okay, no. Job well done, class. Now give yourself 5 claps. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Congratulations! Okay, class. So before we end this meeting, kindly get your assignment notebooks and of course copy this assignment of ours. Because we will be um, answering this or we will be yeah, tackle this in the next meeting, okay? Okay, so it seems that everybody has already copied their assignments. Okay, so um, let us end this meeting with a prayer. So everyone, please stand up and let's bow down our heads. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be a world without end. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And that's all for today. I hope you have learned something. Thank you for listening. See you soon. Bye-bye!